Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at the application lifecycle sorry, that should be the activity lifecycle in Android. So if you go to uh, Google and you search for Android activity lifecycle you'll find this page from developer.android.com which has a really nice diagram in it if you scroll down a bit and after you've installed your activity it's, uh, it's of course not necessarily running and activities in Android they tend to stay running for a long time in the background after you've started them so when you start your application what happens is um, the onCreate method is called and we've been overriding our uh, onCreate method to do kind of our setup in the application we call super.onCreate which is very important and then we kind of set up the application's layout and anything else that we need to set up to initially run the application. And that all, ha all happens in the overridden onCreate method. Now after onCreate, onStart is called and then onResume and then the activity is running in the foreground. And if, you sh if your activity is shut down and it could be shut down by, um, for example, if you stopped your application, you've gone to another application altogether and memory gets low, Android might decide to actually shut down your application rather than to leave it running in the background. And when that happens, on pause is called, then on stop, then on destroy. So all these methods are called in sequence. But now it can also happen that if, if your, let's say your activity is running and uh, a dialogue comes up, a system dialogue, so your activity is still visible but it's no longer in the foreground then your, your application, your activity will enter the on pause state and your activities on pause method will be called so we'll go to here in the diagram and after on pause there are two things that could happen one is that your application could end up being stopped and then destroyed for example uh, because on pause is just one step on the way towards closing down the application but most often the user will probably go back to your application or at least I say most often um, certainly this is a frequent possibility and if you're if you're if the user returns to your application and the, and the application is brought back in is brought back into the foreground then on on resume will be called and the activity will be running again similarly if your applications stopped um, if you go to another application completely so that your activity is no longer even visible in the background it will be stopped so it's still kind of hanging around in the background in a stop state but it's not destroyed it's still loaded into memory and in that case uh, on, after on stop either it can happen that your application will be started again because the user goes back to it in which case on restart is called then on start is called again and then on resume and then your, your activity is running again but it could also happen that the activity will be closed down by Android to reclaim the memory for example in which case on destroy will be called and the activity will be shut down so a quick summary is that uh, first of all it's important to realize that these these methods are always called in sequence on if on create is called then uh, well let's say yeah, if on create is called, then the next step will be on start and on resume before the activity is running. And similarly, if the activity is shut down, first on pause will be called, then on stop, then on destroy. And if your application is no longer in the foreground but still running, it will enter the pause state. So on pause will be called, and before it can unpause and become and get into the foreground again, on resume will be called. And if your application is not even visible, so it's uh, the user is using another application altogether or another activity I should really say then the activity will be stopped it will enter the on stop state and it will go through on pause first then on stop and from on stop the application can either be restarted in which case on restart and on start is called and then on resume and then it's running or it could be destroyed this way so um, when you first encounter this, I think it seems quite complex, but it's actually um, really simple once you get your head around it and you can remember which methods are involved. 
And we've already looked at the onCreate method here. We've used that to set our application up. And here, we're going to make use, in this tutorial, we're going to make use of onPause. Because onPause, as I say, it's used whenever your activity goes out, recedes from the foreground. So if um, some system dialog comes up, on pause will be called will be called. But it's also called before your application is destroyed. And this means that on pause is a pretty good place to save your data because it will happen you can expect it to happen during the kind of life of the activity and it will always happen before the activity is destroyed. So in on pause if you've got some data to save and as long as it doesn't take more than a brief amount of time, most a second or two to save that data, you can do it in on pause. And if your activity has to save a lot of data, then don't try to do it in on pause because your application may get stopped or destroyed before it can complete. Uh, if your application has to save a lot of data, you need to be saving it as you go along while your activity is actually running. Now in my uh, my squirrel, my note squirrel application, let's see, um, I've here's my emulator and I just want to close down this keyboard here by touching my phone. Um, I've got this text that the user can type here and I've got a save button to save the text and I've rearranged my application just a little bit so that the text is saved in a method called save text. So if we go to my main activity which presents this this screen here then I've given it a where are we a save text method yeah it's down here the main activity and here's save text and this saves the text in response to the save button being clicked here but I could also add this to on pause so let's um, let's right click here and go to source override implement methods and I'm going to look for on pause in here override this and I'm going to leave super on, on pause in there it's really important that that should stay there but I'm going to add save text in here and just save that and now my application will try to save its text whenever it goes into pause mode which could be because the application is being shut down or it could just be that it's no longer in the foreground because some dialogue has come up and it could also be because it's being stopped because the user is changing to another program you see if the application is stopped it will first go through on pause okay so that's it for this tutorial and we're going to move on soon I think to actually deploying this application to actually publishing it in fact so join me again next time, and until next time, happy coding.